Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we are making a nice big dive back into the Middle Earth strategy battle game. But what we're going to do, we're going to paint something a little different. We're going to print, uh, we're going to paint a 3D printed cave troll. So this is a model that I have printed myself at home on a 3D printer. And it is from a great, great, great little designer called Bite the Bullet. So if you uh, would like to check this out, I'll put a link in the description to their uh, sort of storefront. Now I've bought and downloaded this model directly through my mini factory. Um, and then I've just downloaded the STL and printed this at home. So this is a nice cool 3D print and I'm gonna paint this in a sort of blue-gray tone, but we're gonna give him a little bit of a difference by changing his uh, stomach and things like that into a sort of skin tone and just kind of create this really cool sort of contrast and make this really interesting and different looking sort of character. So we're base coating all of the skin using a German gray from Vallejo and we're just gonna cover all of the skin area in this. Then we're gonna go with a beige red again from Vallejo. This is my go-to sort of base color for doing normal sort of skin tones. Um, sort of pinky sort of skin tones and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to water this down a little as you can see on my palette here and I'm just going to paint this all around the stomach area and around the sort of pecs area. Um, making sure that this is nice and thin as you can see I'm not using any specific uh, special or detailed brush for this I'm just using one of my basin brushes so this is why there's a few splits and things like that to it because we don't need to be too precise at this stage we're gonna uh, fix all of that up later and tie all of these colors together and get everything looking really cool or really different as we go what I'm just gonna do is just mark out sort of areas where I want a few random little dots and things like that just coming out of the skin tone into the gray and this is gonna tie that skin tone and the gray together in a cool sort of uh, fashion as well kind of create a little bit of a uh, almost uh, texture or pattern that will allow the skin to feel like it is a bit more organic rather than just a smooth transition um, so it's just going to be a cool little feature and a, and, and a cool little effect like that so this model is, as I say, a resin uh, model that I've 3D printed at home. I absolutely love the character and the tone uh, that this character has. I really love the facial expression, the snarl, the eyes. It's a really, really great model to paint. It's really good fun to paint as well. Um, I like to try to mix and match a lot of different models on my channel, so I don't always like to stick with just one company or just one board game. So that's why I'm trying to do a 3D printed model here. So once I've painted the skin area just across the stomach area, then I'm gonna use a heavy red color. So this is just a nice dark, heavy red tone. This is part of the opaque range from the Vallejo as well. And we're just gonna paint this through the mouth, so just around the tongue area, and just around the gums and things like that as well. As you can see with the skin tone, I've just gone up and underneath the chin as well. Again, looking into a little bit of research as to some of the colors and some of the, the skin tones and things like that on the trolls. It's not gonna get everything exactly perfect, or exactly the right color or anything like that. I always like to make my own little sort of colors up and get things to look quite similar but have a little bit of character and have my own little spin on things as well. So once that's done, we're gonna use a skeleton bone. This is from the Army Painter and I'm just gonna paint all of his nails. So just the, the nails on his feet here, as you can see, and also the fingernails and of course his teeth as well. So this skeleton bone is a great sort of uh, yellowish sort of cream color. This is a great base color because as you tone up from this, you do end up with a really nice sort of finished effect uh, with the sort of lighter creams to off white tones and things like that. They tend to go really, really Really well off the top of this color. So just painting around the teeth. Again, trying to be careful. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we are going to fix these things up later. So don't worry too much if there are a few tiny or small mistakes anyway. It's not the end of the world. As you can see, just painting around his fingers here. So then I'm going to use a silver gray. This is a, a great color from the AK Interactive range. You don't have to use a silver gray. Any kind of off-white would do. So if you have like an off-white color uh, from uh, Vallejo, uh, then you could use that as well. And that's all I'm going to do with this color is just try to paint this into the eye sockets here. Just preparing uh, the color and preparing sort of the character and the tone uh, for where we're going to paint the eyes a little bit later. So just trying to cover the area around the eye sockets. Doesn't matter again if you make uh, a slight mistake because again we are going to fix things later. So I'm going to use a Draconoff Nightshade from Citadel. This is a nice dark dark blue color. So sticking with that sort of blue gray tone that we want we're just going to add this onto our palette in a few sort of large areas and then we're going to add a 
a small amount of water so that this manipulates onto the miniature in a nice, uh, quick and even fashion. And then we're just gonna cover all of the areas that we painted um, with this color. You don't have to cover the, um, the sort of cream areas, the bone and things like that. You can cover those with a more sort of brown tone if you want um, instead. But I'm just gonna cover this all in a single tone, so this one, one blue color. And at first you might think, oh no, Dan, what have you done? You've ruined the model. Uh, but actually, uh, don't panic too much because as we build the colors back up, you'll realize and you'll see that actually this, this lends into the style and lends into the, the really cool sort of character that I managed to get out of it towards the end. It's a fun and interesting little way of painting because you kind of put this onto the model, especially over that skin tone where you kind of think, mm, does blue really suit the skin tone and things like that? Uh, but towards the end of the model, you'll realize that actually it suits quite well and it ties those colors quite nicely together. So as you can see, I'm just covering the whole model for this one. Um, you can cover it in multiple different tones, so just blue for the gray and skin tone for the, red, uh, for the skin and things like that. Now, once all of that is dry, we're then going to move on to use the beige red. So we're just using that base tone for the skin again. And we're gonna slowly, using our detail brush, so this is our size zero D detail brush, we are going to slowly, using the brush strokes, build up the skin tone just up and around uh, where we painted the skin originally. Now the cool thing with this is by using the uh, the brush strokes, we're then gonna manipulate and create this cool sort of effect of the skin folding over the, uh, over the model and over the miniature. As you can see, I've got a nice thin down paint for this, uh, which is great because this is gonna allow us to build the tone up in multiple layers. What you don't want to do is go too extreme and put a really thick layer on top and then lose out on um, some of the underlying and colors and tones from underneath. As you can see by using this nice thin down paint, we get in the underneath tone and the underneath color there but we're actually able to, to still uh, sort of maintain and keep some of that blue tone and things like that as well. So you can really see sort of how that texture and how that lightness and vibrance is gonna to start to build through. Now, as I say, or as I normally say on the channel, when you paint in with thin layers like this, you can do multiple layers and gain sort of a higher vibrancy or push the sort of vibrancy and the tone and the texture as far as you like. Now that's the cool thing with this. As you can see, the paint is so thin that as I'm building this up, we start to get thicker, more vibrant, sort of more, um, controlled areas where we are having highlighted colors and things like that. So it gives us the opportunity to manipulate where we want the color tone to be, but without um, putting in too much work or having to worry too much about sort of those thick layers and losing details on the model and things like that. So as you can see, I'm just painting all of this around the skin. And you can really see now that the, the colors now, that sort of blue undertone to the, the sort of normal skin tone is starting to blend through quite nicely. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that I use this combination quite a lot. So this is using the beige red and a basic skin tone. You can see me just placing them in my palette here. Then I'm gonna add a few little dots of water. So just two little spots of water, three there, just to kind of mix this and make this nice and thin. And then I'm gonna switch around to my detail brush again. And we're gonna start to pick out those highlighted points as well. Now this is again, nice and thin. And as you can see, where the original skin tone has dried down and we've got those really cool, great looking sort of blue sort of tones and things like that just going through all of the folds of the skin. We're now gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use this highlighted color and just add in a little bit of water to the brush. We're then gonna slowly use the very tip of the brush, the detail brush again, and slowly build the highlight color. So we're doing the exact same thing. We're using the brush strokes to follow the direction of the miniature. So you can see the way that his belly is just hanging out here. His stomach has just got this sort of overhang and we've got all of these different folds of skin, and things like that. So using the brush strokes, as you can see, we're getting this texture and this tone and detail through the stomach area and through this, this really sort of cool looking effect. And again, it's not taking too long. It's not too much of an extreme, uh, difficult um, effect to achieve. It's not a paint in sort of style that is unachievable or takes years and years of practice. It is just literally building up those thin layers of paint just to build those highlights. And you can really see how quickly uh, we can do this uh, just on this model here. 
it's actually a really great sculpt for this because there's so much detail and so many sort of folded areas around the muscle tone and around the muscle texture and things like that. It gives you the option to really build those colors and build those tones up. And you can see as I'm painting around some of the higher areas, you can see where it's drying just around the stomach area and creating that really great effect. So from there, I'm gonna use a, uh, an ink from here. So this is a portrait pink ink, and this is a really, really great um, effect. So ink is a very, very thin highlight color. Now this one particularly is quite light, so I'm adding a little bit of water to it as well. And you can see on the palette just how thin this paint actually is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the extreme edge of our brush. And here, we're just gonna try to slowly pick out some more of those highlights. And as you can see, using the brush strokes again, we're just gonna be very, very careful about where we place this. So we want this on the, the more extreme areas, the, the parts of the model that are really picking out those sort of highlights as if the, the light is just catching across his stomach area, just like so. The great thing with using an ink is inks, when you place them on a model, almost always look way too bright for the model but as you continue to paint and as this dries into the model it does dry down into a really nice even sort of uh, style into a really nice even color it creates a great highlight but without having to work too hard for it especially because the paint is quite thin and we've added a little bit of water to it you really see that highlight e effect that highlight tone really show through on the model but without it needing way too many layers or too many uh, coats or anything like that you don't need to to spend ages blending this through you can really see the highlights just start to pull through and there you go so once that's done then we're going to use a dark blue gray and this is where we're going to use this to start to build up all of those sort of colors across the skin tone of the um the troll's flesh so instead of using this across the stomach area now we're going to use this all across uh, the gray tones and the green co gray color that we used originally so we started with the german gray which is a nice dark color and we added that blue tone on top using the dragon of nightshade so now using the tip of the brush we're going to do the same as what we've done for his stomach but we're going to paint this now instead across all of those gray areas so we're going to start to pick out all of those details around his face things like his eyebrows eyes nose mouth all of these different things and we're just going to slowly build this up and again by having uh, the the paint on the wet palette and adding a little bit of water to the paint this allows the paint to last longer on the brush and it gives you a easier to manipulate paint as you paint but it also allows the paint to dry down a lot more even and in a much more subtle and much more sort of pleasing way and it catches the eye in a much much nicer fashion as well it's so just covering all of those highlighted points and as you can see just picking some of the paint up off of my palette and then using the side of the palette just to uh, sort of take off all of the excess because we don't want too much paint on the brush either we don't want large large blobs of highlights we want to kind of control this using uh, the, the edge of the brush and just giving us the ability to sort of control where our highlights are going to be so just showing you this across the head and the face mostly because this is where most of the details actually are and you can see where i'm just trying to manipulate and flow where that paint is going just around the, the eye sockets and all those different folds and things in this snarling face that he's got and you can see where the skin around his stomach and things has dried really really nicely now but yeah, just picking out all of those areas around the face, as you can see, just picking out uh, the cheekbones and things like that, leaving sort of the darker area uh, do its job, sort of allowing us to get the character and things all around the face, the snarl, leaving the darker um, sort of that blue tone sort of sitting in between all of those recessed points and cracks around his lips and things like that, creating that really cool sort of snarling face. And we're going to do the same thing, as I say, just painting all of this skin, just going up and around the arms, as you can see, just using the brush strokes um, as sort of part of the texture, because we don't want everything to be too smooth and looking too soft. We kind of want some of these brush strokes to add to the tone, add to the texture, add to the character and things like that. So once that's dry, we're gonna use the dark uh, blue-gray and then we're gonna use a blue-gray pale. Now the blue-gray pale is quite light. So instead of using this uh, too heavily, I'm just gonna add, as you can see, a small amount first. So this is sort of two parts of the dark blue-gray to one part of the blue-gray pale. Um, and then I'm just gonna add quite a bit of water to this. So just about three, four, maybe five blobs of water, just so that this becomes really, really thin. Uh, because again, we kind of wanna build this layer up. We don't want this to be too extreme 
extreme. We don't want the highlights to look too prominent and too over the top and too extreme for the model. So we're gonna use nice thin down paint so that it blends into the model in a much more even fashion. And as you can see, I'm just once again, as always, so like we did with the stomach area and of course the first layer of the gray, using the very edge of the brush and those brush strokes to create those uh, sort of illusions of texture and tone and just building these things through. And as you can see, just using those brush strokes now to, to create the character and to build that highlight. So we're just gonna follow all around uh, the, the color and the, the lighting and all of the details around the shoulders, the arms, and of course the face like we have done previously as well. Just show you a little bit just across the shoulder area here because it's always worth painting this on the higher up areas where the light is gonna catch um, and then leaving sort of the areas underneath just a little bit darker as well. And again, by using this nice thin down layer, well, this, this nice thin down paint, we can add two, three, four, five layers and really build that vibrance as we go. And this is a great way of learning how to build up that tone and build up that vibrance as well. So once that bit is dry, then I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. So we're gonna use the exact same two paints. The difference being now is instead of using two parts of uh, the darker color, we're gonna use two parts of the lighter color. And then again, I'm gonna add quite a bit of water to this just to kind of get this into the tone and texture that I want. And on my palette, you can see the sort of three different colors there. So you can see the base tone, uh, the mid tone, and then this being the highlight. And you can see those stages up in the, uh, the palette here as well. It's really great for me to be able to paint Paint like this and show you guys the palette as I'm painting because it gives me the opportunity then to kind of show you how I work and how I sort of build up these highlights and colors and things like that and again just using that very very tip of that brush I'm just going to pick out all of those details where we think the light is catching so across the lips here leaving the darker areas in all those recess points all around these sort of eyelids here and things like that Yes, like so, just picking out all of those bits that we kind of want the, the, that light to really be catching and just kind of build that character through these lighter tones, these lighter sort of points. And it's a really, really great, as I say, simple sort of way of painting. It's really rewarding because as you kind of paint up in this sort of way, it, it seems really advanced, but it's not that advanced. It's, it's quite, quite simple, uh, but it does give you this really, really cool sort of end result. I do have a little bit of a cartoony style to the way that I paint. So apologies if that's not for everyone, um, but I tend to, uh, I don't know how or why that just tends to be my default sort of paint style. Um, but yeah, it works for me and I enjoy it. And that's all that matters really. As long as we're painting models and having fun, then it doesn't matter about anything else. And there you go, you can really see that character coming through in that face now. He's snarling and looking really sort of mean and angry and aggressive, I love it. Such a great, great sculpt, such a great model. So yeah, just picking out all of those bits across the head as well, just where we think the light is going to be catching and things like that. And again, you can see I'm still using those brush strokes, still just painting along and building up the highlight layer, just like so, look at that. There we go, bit by bit, layer by layer, stage by stage, nice and simple. And it's giving us a control as to where we want the highlights to be on the skin. You see in his face, it looks like he's got so many different layers and so many different tones and things like that. And we've only really used sort of three colors, essentially. So it's really, really nice how, uh, how quickly and how simply this can come together and sort of look this really sort of deep and, and colorful and, and sort of textured face and textured style in such a quick and simple way. So as you know me uh, so well by now, by watching a lot of the videos that I make, you know that I enjoy making a lot of these long, long videos. So you get to see the brush strokes and you get to see me build the model up and paint in so many different ways. Um, so yeah. I, I tend to enjoy these uh, these long, long videos. I enjoy uh, being able to talk my way right the way through from start to finish. I don't like these little snippets and things like that. So I hope you guys appreciate that as well. So yeah, once that's done, we're just gonna move on to a Dark Rust 302, which is one of my channel favorites. You will recognize this if you've watched any of my other videos. I use this as a great, great base tone for uh, brown colors. So a lot of brown tones and brown colors. I use this Dark Rust color at first because it's a very good dark, dark dark brown tone so that's all i'm going to do is just paint this around his little cloth here just being very careful now not to get this on any of the skin tones that we've already painted and we're just going to be very very careful like so and we're also going to paint this across the wooden handle as well 
Now, once that's done, I'm going to use a couple of AK Interactive paints, and I'm going to use um, the Anthracite Grey first. Anthracite Grey is this sort of blue, blue, grey tone, so it's kind of like this slate blue sort of colour, which is really, really nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dry brush lightly across all of those uh, sort of... Um, rocky kind of um, scales and things like that just across his back. So we're just going to use this anthracite grey as the first sort of tone because that's given us the really cool blue sort of colour, which is going to tie the model into the rest of the blue tone and blue skin on the front. Once that one is di uh, done then, we're going to move on and use the graphite colour. So this is a nice mid-tone grey. And then I'm just going to gently try to dry brush this over the top. So we're not trying to cover all of that blue grey, we're just trying to catch the very very extreme edges of these sort of scales as you can see and we're doing this just so that that creates this highlight and creates this sort of craggy rocky kind of um, sort of tone and effect once that's done then I'm going to use the silver gray again so again this is just that off-white color and this is going to be the most extreme of those highlights then and again just using a little bit of kitchen roll and wiping off all of the excess paint so that there's barely any paint left on my brush and as you can see when I'm dry brushing then it's literally just catching the very 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 extreme edges of the model. So dry brushing is a really really cool technique to use. It's a fun technique to use and it is a really good technique for things like rocks and things like that because it's such a messy scratchy rough sort of technique. It kind of gives rocks that kind of authentic rough kind of feel and rough kind of look. Now that's all I'm going to do here then is just add a small amount of null oil with water. So this is a black wash. This is from Citadel. And I'm just going to make sure that I place plenty of water with this. And then I'm just going to use this to tie those sort of grey colours together just slightly by adding a little bit of this black wash. And this will allow those rocky areas across his back just to tie into the rest of the model. We're also going to use that null oil then just to place across the weapon, just like so. And we're going to place this across the weapon and a little bit across his uh, sort of cloth area, the, the clothing just covering uh, his sort of body. Just going to place this um, null oil, this sort of really thin down black wash just in there, just so that that ties all of those bits together as well. Once that's done, I'm also then going to use uh, some strong tone so this is the army painter dark dark brown wash and i'm going to cover this over all of those brown areas so we're going to paint this across the handle we're going to paint this across the silver as well so we're going to paint this across the um the weapon and we're also going to paint this across um the the sort of cloth area here just covering all of his body so just covering all of those areas leaving this dark dark brown just in the recess points just like so and I realized that I've painted the silver areas and my camera didn't record me painting the silver areas. So I do apologize, but that's all I've done with his neck piece, as you can see, and his weapon. I've just painted those silver. And my go-to silver for that is normally uh, just a nice thick Vallejo silver. So I normally use a gunmetal silver, but you could also use things like a lead belcher from Citadel. Um, that would be absolutely fine. That would be a really good sort of dark, dark silver color. Uh, but just to give you an idea as to what colors and things like that I've done that with. And you can see this dark tone now has this really great sort of brown, grimy, streaky sort of effect, which is fantastic for the weapon because the weapon is going to look all beaten up and battered and worn and dirty and grimy. And then we're going to use a mixture of the Dark Rust 302, which is the dark, dark color. And as you can see, I'm just adding uh, the leather brown from Vallejo as well on top. And again, I'm just going to mix quite a bit of water with this. So three or four blobs of water, just so that I get this nice and thin. And I get this up to the tone and sort of uh, sort of thickness and manipulating uh, color that I uh, really need. So we're just going to swap our brushes out again. And just using our detail brush, we're now going to slowly build uh, the colors and the textures and the details back up. So again, we're doing the same sort of technique as what we used on the skin. And we're just going to build this right the way through so using those brush strokes as well we're going to create that illusion of texture and things again and that's all we're going to do is just follow the way that the model is sort of the dynamic pose of the model so we're just going to follow the way uh, the where the wash has sat so by placing that dark dark wash on the model you can really see where the the wash has sat in some of those areas and darkened bits up and that's all we are doing then is picking out the raised areas where the wash 
isn't sitting. And again, because this is a nice thin down paint, this is going to blend quite nicely into the miniature. This is going to blend quite nicely into the model and into uh, the sort of base color and the base tone and give us this great platform to build multiple layers from should we need to. And you can see just how quickly I'm building this uh, sort of first highlight, this sort of um, uh, like main um, color, this sort of main texture and main tone from. And you can really see when you put sort of more than one layer on just how much of an effect this has. There we go, just like so. I'm building that texture, I'm building that highlight and that vibrance. Because you could put three or four layers on and really control where you want the light source to be and where you want the vibrance to come from and things like that. Just like so. So once that bit is done, I'm then going to use just leather brown on its own. And again, using a little bit of water, so three or four blobs of water. And then we're just going to pick out all of those highlights and do the same thing again. We're going to slowly build the highlights back up by using, again, the very, very tip of the brush. So using the very same technique and the very same style that we've done right the way through the model. And then you can see just how much of a, an effect this is going to have on the highlights there. Just like so. There you go really see this sort of picking out that sort of yellowish color that sort of yellowish brown tone and this is going to dry quite nicely in a nice smooth transition on the model just swapping my brushes out there because it looked like i was using the wrong brush by mistake so just using the tip of this brush and just slowly building this there you go you can really see that yellow tone coming through and really gives us that control as to where the highlighting areas and the highlighting zones is going to be really really lovely technique really really simple to do and it looks fantastic as well on the model so you guys will have to let me know in the comment section if you like this 3d print if you like this model if you think this is a great one you have to also let me know what you think of the painting as well the style is this an easy to follow uh, video is it the, t the tutorial um, uh, pretty good do you enjoy seeing the palette on the side where i can show you sort of how i mix the paints together and things like that you have to let me know sort of how uh, how i'm doing with my videos and and things like that so once that's done, I'm also then going to use a raw sienna. So I'm going back to using a cool little bit of a um, a little bit of an ink here. So again, using this raw sienna, this is going to be a very, very sort of bright yellow brown sort of color. And again, because this has a little bit of water mixed in, this is going to have a really great sort of highlight effect. Once again, I mean, this is going to give us the ability to um, highlight some of those folds and areas on the uh, the sort of brown area and the brown tone just here and again we're picking that out using the very tip of the brush like i say same effect same technique same style and we're just going to slowly build this up and build this sort of layer and highlight in a nice quick easy fashion so yeah you'll have to let me know if this is a simple sort of video if if you enjoy sort of the technique that i paint is it nice and easy to follow because ideally that is ultimately the goal is to be able to paint something that you're proud of and you're happy with and, and you like the sort of look of it by the end uh, but not have to spend hours upon hours upon hours upon hours uh, trying to perfect the style and get the blend exactly perfect and exactly right that's my ultimate goal is to be able to help you guys and help others on their painting uh, journeys but without making it seem too unachievable. Um, I like to be able to make sure that the painting style is something that anyone and everyone can do if they uh, so wanted to to try. So yeah, let me know if you think that's that's fair and if, if I manage to catch, um, if I manage to, to achieve that. So there we go, as you can see, just slowly picking out all of those lighter colors, lighter tones, and you'll really see how this is just blending in to the model, just like so. Just adding a few little sort of cross hatches, cross stitches, just sort of put in a few little scratches and effects and things like that. So once we're done with that bit, we're going to use a plate mail metal. So this is a nice uh, middle of the road silver tone from the Army Painter. This one is a quite a shiny sort of silver, to be fair. This has a really, really great sort of shine and glow to it. And that's all I'm going to do is just gently pick out the dry brushing area just across the sort of... Um, uh, the metal areas, the metal points and things like that that I've just got around the neck area here. I'm just going to paint all of these bits. Just going to be as careful as possible not to get this on the skin that we've spent so long painting. But again, like I say, we're using a very, very, very small dry brush. So this is giving us a lot more control than normal. There's nothing worse than using a big, big dry brush on a small job um, and then losing all of the control and painting over areas that you've spent ages doing. We're also going to do the same thing across the weapon, just dry brushing this 
uh, using this silver tongue and this is going to give it that scratchy worn out rusty sort of broken sort of look um, because all of the the washes the black wash the brown wash they've all just sat just into all of those scratches and recess points and then that's going to give us the tone and texture between the silver shining through and all of those dark dark grimy sort of areas just like so there you go just like this fantastic little easy again very very simple great little technique to do and again just like i say trying to be careful so once that's done, we're going to go back with the uh, the bone sort of colours. We're actually going to use a bone white from Vallejo now, which is a really, really nice, light, vibrant sort of creamy bone colour. So where is the original bone colour that we placed on the... Um, the, the, the bone areas, the skeleton bone from the army paint that has this sort of yellowy tinge to it, that's what makes it such a good base colour because once you go back and use this bone white, this then has a less of a yellow colour but more of a whitey sort of tone, more of a creamy colour. And this is great because this gives you the option or the ability to build up from this yellowy sort of uh, rough yellow kind of bone colour and bone tone up into having these great sort of um, creamy white highlights. And it's a fantastic, fantastic style. Again, very simple because you've got this yellowy sort of um, colour as a base, then this really nice sort of creamy highlight. And then you can highlight further then uh, using things like Elphic Flesh or an off-white tone and an off-white colour. It just gives you a lot of options, which is great to do. So here we go, just painting all of this around those teeth as well. Try to be very careful with the teeth. Um, this is quite a, a difficult little area. So just using the very tip of the brush, just to add a little blob of this bone white color and just around these big fangs here as well, these bottom jaw fangs and just across, as you can see there, just trying to be, as I say, as careful as possible. And then once that bit is done, we're going to use a pure red from the Army Painter as well. Now this is a much, much brighter red colour. This is a great red tone. And this is going to give us the opportunity to really build up those red colours in his mouth and give us a really sort of bright focal point. Because the majority of the, the model is sort of grey, this is why I wanted to opt for painting like the skin tone on his stomach, this red in his mouth, and give him sort of a, a, a leather sort of brown kind of... Um, area to his uh, clothing it's just about breaking the model up and making it seem a little bit less sort of monotone uh, because you can paint quite a lot of greys and a lot of monotone on these trolls and that's fine and they look the part and they look like the movie uh, but for me i always enjoy adding my own little spin on it so creating this character uh, by adding these really sort of focal bright sort of colors like so um, is a really cool way of doing it and all in all, once you're done, and once you get to sort of the stage that I'm at, you should have something that looks like this. So this is my uh, cave troll, all complete and all done. Um, I painted uh, all of the techniques, as you can see, uh, on camera as we go. Um, the only things that I've added off camera really is just the pupils in the eyes because it's really difficult to catch that on video. Uh, but that is where a lot of the character comes from. His face, his eyes, the expression is so, so fantastic. As always, my friends, please uh, drop any comments. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the painting, what you think about the sculpt, if you like this video, um, and if you think the text and techniques are uh, cool and easy to follow, um, as always. So, as always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching, especially if you've watched all the way through. I really appreciate all of your time. Honestly, I know I like long videos, so um, thank you so much for sticking the distance and watching all of the way through. Um, as always, please take care of yourselves. I will see you guys on the next one. And thank you again for all of your kindness um, and all of your support throughout. Take care, my friends, and I will see you soon.